Hey everybody, welcome back to Windy City Astrophotography. In this video, I'm going a little bit off the beaten path for my usual imaging. Tonight, I'm going to be trying to capture an image of the dwarf planet Pluto. Can I do it? Well, usually when I image with my scope, I'm choosing objects that are relatively big in the sky. It's kind of hard to tell, but a lot of these objects, if we could see them with our naked eye, would be huge. Take the Andromeda Galaxy, for instance. With the naked eye, you can see just a smudge of light in a very dark sky. What you're seeing there is just the very central bright core of the Andromeda Galaxy. The whole thing, which you can capture with astrophotography, like in this image that I took, is the equivalent of six full moons placed side by side in the sky. It's huge. Now, thankfully, my telescope has a big field of view, so it's able to take in these big, dim objects. But planets, or in this case, a dwarf planet, as seen from Earth, these things are not huge. My telescope is not made for planetary observation or lunar observation. So why am I going after Pluto? Well, the goal certainly isn't detail, any detail whatsoever. Even if I had a telescope that was well equipped for planetary observation, with Pluto, I wouldn't see a thing, just the light reflected off its surface. Before the New Horizons spacecraft flew by Pluto back in 2015, the best image we had of Pluto, like the Hubble Space Telescope image of Pluto, looked like this. Not great. And then New Horizons flew by and saw this. Wow. But for me and this little project to image Pluto, I'm not looking for any detail. I just want to see it. I want to see the light that left the sun earlier today when I was eating lunch. Spent all day traveling towards Pluto, reflected off of its surface, and right now is getting towards Earth. And when I've got my scope and camera set up, that photon will enter the apparatus and I'll be able to capture it in the image. That's what I want to see. And do that not from a dark sky with pristine views of the universe. I want to do it from the light polluted skies of Chicago. It should be possible with the right equipment. So how am I going to do it? Well, first, my camera. This is the ASI 1600mm Pro from ZWO. It's a cooled astrophotography camera, which means the sensor itself can be cooled down to make it more sensitive to incoming light. Now, generally, I set it at about negative 15 degrees Celsius. That's the actual temperature of the sensor. It's 5 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, because it's so cold, it's very sensitive to this light. So even the tenuous signal from distant galaxies or interstellar dust or ancient supernova remnants gets picked up and can be made into an image. Second piece of equipment, my filter. I'm going to be using this 3.5 nanometer hydrogen alpha filter from Botter Planetarium. I normally use this type of filter to isolate very particular wavelengths of light, in this case a red wavelength of light emitted by energetic regions of space. This filter blocks 99% of the light pollution of Chicago and lets through essentially 100% of that special red light. Now, Pluto isn't emitting that very specific wavelength of light. It's reflecting essentially a full spectrum of sunlight. But what this filter will do is still block out 99% of Chicago's light pollution, helping the contrast with the signal of Pluto and giving that at least a fighting chance to be seen. Now, the rest of the setup is going to help me along as well. I've got a computerized mount that's going to help me point the telescope in the right direction, a guiding camera and scope to keep it pointed in exactly the right spot, an electronic focuser that's going to help everything stay pin sharp, and dew heater straps to keep the optics clear of dew and condensation. But there's still a problem. How am I going to know that I got Pluto? Using a smartphone app like Stellarium lets me know where Pluto is in the sky. It's currently in the constellation of Sagittarius the Archer, and it doesn't get very high in the sky from Chicago, which is part of the challenge. Pointing at Pluto is no problem either. The computerized mount is going to help. I can tell it to point at Pluto, and it will. The problem is confirming I got Pluto in the image. It's just going to be one of many very faint dots. It's kind of a challenge to figure out which one is which. So in order to confirm that I did in fact capture Pluto in this image, I'm actually going to do two images over the course of two nights. Half an hour of imaging tonight, and half an hour of imaging, hopefully, tomorrow night. Over the course of those two nights, all of the stars will stay in the same spot relative to each other in the image. But Pluto will have moved against the background stars. So by comparing the images from the two nights, I'll be able to see its movement. This is the same thing that Clyde Tombaugh did back in 1930 when he discovered Pluto. He compared photographic plates of the star field, six nights apart in that case, where he thought Pluto might be, and there it was. So that's the plan. 
Now for the Astro Nerds out there, I'm going to be shooting two minute exposures and I'm hoping to capture 15 of those on each night. So a total of 30 minutes integration for each of these two images. So I'm going to go outside and set up and we'll see what we get. Okay, so that went pretty well. I was able to image Pluto for two consecutive nights. Clear nights, two in a row, that doesn't happen all the time, but it did this time. I got 30 minutes each night, put all that data into PixInsight, that is the image processing software that I use for astrophotography. So let's dive in and check it out. All right, so what I have loaded up here, on the left-hand side is the first night of observation, and on the right-hand side, is the second night. Now these are stacks of 15 images each. Each of the individual images was a two minute exposure. I've stacked 15 of those together in each instance for a 30 minute of integration in, the, in each image. Now if you're not sure what stacking does and why that's advantageous, let me show you this. Now on the right hand side is a single image, single two minute exposure from the first night. Let me match uh, field of view here on these two, from the stacked image from the first night and a single exposure. Check that out. There's so much noise in that individual image. And on the left, there's definitely still some noise. I only got 15 exposures. If I doubled or quadrupled that, it would have been a much cleaner image. But also Pluto is not that high in the sky for all that long. However, you can see, let's pick out this kind of oblong triangle of stars here. Definitely recognizable. On the right hand side, not really visible. You can certainly tell it's there, but it's certainly not clear. Now check this out. Just to the left of that oblong triangle in the individual image, we could just barely make out maybe a couple of points of light there. But check it out in the stacked image. Definitely two points of light to the left of that oblong triangle. And from what I can tell in Stellarium, that point of light on the left is Pluto. It just happens to be kind of next to a background star for that tight pairing. Let me show you what, what I mean here. If I now match the field of view from the first night of stacked images to the second night, check this out. On the right hand side now is the second night of images. Here's that oblong triangle of stars. To the left, now only a single point of light and a new point of light where there wasn't one before. Now, glancing back and forth between these two from side to side, it's not all that clear. You'd really have to get lucky to spot that. But the way I definitely knew I was looking at the right thing is by blinking the images. Now, this is a similar process to what Clyde Tombaugh used almost 100 years ago to find Pluto. He blinked between two plates of the sky and then determined that moving point of light was Pluto. Well, let's check it out here. I've loaded the process in PixInsight called Blink. I've loaded the two master frames. So one from the first night, one from the second. Those are the stacked images. And every half second here, they're gonna blink back and forth. Check this out. And you can see it, clear as day. We've got that oblong triangle of stars here, one star to its left, and then we've got Pluto blinking back and forth. So, mission accomplished. I was able to image Pluto from the light polluted skies of Chicago and confirm that it was Pluto I was looking at using a technique similar to what Clyde Tombaugh used almost 100 years ago to discover Pluto. Now, did I discover something new? No. Did I take an award-winning image? Almost certainly not. Did I do something that a few years ago before I started this crazy hobby I would have thought was completely impossible? Definitely. Is that the only sort of thing I can do with my telescope? Certainly not. And if you haven't subscribed yet, definitely do to Windy City Astrophotography. And you can check out some of my more typical astrophotography videos here with objects that you too might want to image from your skies. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. Clear skies.